How are you doing today, YouTube land? This is Steve with Vast Motorsports. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm going to do a little video on the carpet in the bass boat and show you before and after what she came from and what she is now. It's not totally finished as far as the full build. I'm doing a full restoration on the boat, even though it was in excellent shape as far as low hours. It was left outside and the weather destroyed it, so we're bringing her back to life, me and little Jasp. My dad was helping me with it some. Thank you, Dad. Uh, but we got the carpet all done in it, and I wanted to show you some of that because, to be honest, I don't think you can get a better job as far as the way the carpet's done. It's very professional, just like the factory did it. I thought everything was going to be simple and just butt the carpet up to the walls and stuff like that. Boy, was I wrong. I wanted it done right like the factory, so I had to disassemble the whole entire boat and wrap it the way it's, every edge is wrapped around every panel. And uh, you'll get to see that in the video here. So stick around and check it out. Thanks. And uh, like I said, hit that like button and subscribe. And you'll be able to see all these other custom builds we do and the finished product. Because we will be taking this out. I'm going to take it down to Florida. And we're going to do some intercoastal uh, running around. Probably hit the uh, lakes there in the Winter Haven area. There's a bunch of channels between all the lakes and you can go from one lake to the next. I think there's only one lock in the whole system. So check that out in the upcoming future. So it's been a while since me and Jasper been out here working on the boat anyway. My son going to put some tires away in the shed. But anyway, uh, yeah, she's a mess. So the first thing off, it took a little while, but I did get title. Everything is straight there. And uh, so now it's time just to, I've been getting all the leaves and stuff off. You can see the motor's pretty clean. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting all this junk out of here. And I did go ahead and pick up an impeller for the uh, foot there because it was not doing a little pee thing. And uh, the buzzer was going off, as you remember, so we'll see if we can get that taken care of and get her fired up again. Guess I should go ahead and do another little walk around here, a before and after. Get the big <laughs> stuff growing in here and all. Maybe get some of this out. We gotta get all this crap cleaned out because she's gonna make a nice boat again. I'm not real worried about that because guess what? I know somebody that does seats. Anyway, me and Jasper, we're gonna get her fixed up. Yes, we are. So we can go out and go catch some fish, Jasper. <laughs> all right. All right, so I wanted to show you what's down in here. Mm, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, boy. A boat's best friend. Not. But the good thing is, as you can see with this bass tracker, she's all aluminum. Even under the carpet here, pulling up the carpet. Guess what? It's aluminum floor. All the locker lids and stuff are aluminum so i'll give them that they are a good built well built boat the bass tracker i just wouldn't want to be out in a lightning storm So on this one, we got it loose here, and along the floor, it's got the hex bits, two rivets over here holding it in. We got to take this one out first, so then we can get this box, and then we can take these side pieces off. But I'm about to take the driver's seat off first to see if any of this, this whole thing's got to come out. So this side panel has screws in the top and 
screws in the bottom right here in the corner going in this way one right here in front of this all right starts right there and goes all the way down through here one piece all the way around the bow so that's going to be the starboard side all right on this side we got two down here at the front we got one about every foot there's three there on the top in the locker area it skips a good spot all the way back here to the seat brace one and two and then we got one down here going in sideways i don't think there's any in here if there is i'll get a picture all right this side panel did come out before the floor this side will not come out because the way it's going under this uh, seating thing so i have to lift the wood up first so when i'm going back in i need to put the two side panels and run the controls and fuse block through and then the wooden floor can go in in the middle all right so we pretty much got all the decking taken out of the boat the floor was in pretty rough shape the only place that it actually does have wood is right here in the driver's area and the front deck is wood so now i'm going to go ahead and get all this cleaned up vacuum everything out these are the little drains going through into the hole i'm going to get everything vacuumed out good and get the rest of the remnants of carpet gone and then i'm actually going to wash everything real good get this mildew moldy whatever it's uh 20 years old of dirt so let's get all that out of here and then it's time to start cleaning up these surfaces and get them ready for the new glue and the new carpet to go in she is going to be sharp when she's done so definitely stick around till the end of the video do yourself a favor and see how the transformation of the old bass boat goes here at bass motorsports she's going to turn out like a new one all right so when i'm going back in it looks like this is going to have to be done first before these side panels go in and before the floor goes in let's get this wrapped this part here i'm not so sure Mm, it's just kind of there <laughs> and I'm gonna have to take this piece out through here and this looks like this is wrapped of course before either of these lockers go in and before the floor and the side panel all right remember this Steve they wrapped this seat frame base before they stuck it in the boat so when I go back and I wrap this top, all I got to do is this top layer just come right over and up the side right here and just stop. It does not have to wrap. The side panel will come in and butt all the way down against this. So all it really needs to do is just go behind it. And that's pretty much it. If it comes up a little, that's fine on both sides. I'm about to rip that out. It doesn't even need to be there wrapped around. That's just the way they did it from the factory. All right. So I figured I was going to hit this aluminum and polish it up a little bit before I put all the carpet and everything inside because I'm going to use a buffer and I don't want to throw in everything inside so I went ahead and hit a spot or two to try it and this is the difference come up a lot better it's not that bad you can see a reflection in it you can see the difference matter of fact we'll come back this way I didn't do this as you can see there's no reflection come on back here I tried a little spot back in this area comes up pretty good and I did this side which you can see a big difference compared to this one no shine at all so I think that'll help make it look a little better Yeah, she'll be nice. And then when I get the beautiful carpet in and my new seats, she's going to be looking right. 
All right, me and Jasper, my dad's on his way over. We're going to do some carpet today in the bass boat. And I just wanted to go over some things real quick. I noticed on the videos, I've watched a lot of videos to figure out how to do this. I do custom interiors on boats, uh, but I do not do bass boats. And I have not really had much uh, experience with carpet. I do a lot of the vinyl flooring, the newer vinyl flooring, and I sew the border on and put snaps. And that way you can take it in and out of the boat. I usually work with bigger boats like uh, the Maxima over there or something. I do a lot of seats and boat tops and full enclosures and stuff like that just don't have much carpet experience so anyway watching the videos there's a couple good ones on there even anthony jones has got a real good one it's real detailed on how to install the carpet you may want to watch that to get some good ideas i don't go into as much detail on the actual install i just wanted to show the boat uh process because we're restoring the whole boat but um I noticed uh, a lot of people are ordering like six foot wide and this is a Bass Tracker 175 and I'm going to tell you right now this is more than six foot wide on this back deck here. So you would have a seam or something unless you turn the carpet long ways and run it this way. And then the problem is you're not got all your grains going the same way. And uh, a lot of people express, you do need it going the same way. I've seen one guy do a light tan, and his deck lids, he obviously didn't pay attention. And they were different turns, gray, uh, the grain. And when he stood back and looked at it, looked nice, it's done, don't get me wrong. He redid his own carpet, so good for him. But you could definitely see the uh, different color shades. And I just try to be a perfectionist, anybody that personally knows me, I... If I do something, I like to try to get it as good as I can. Um, the other thing I noticed, I ordered some carpet. It was a uh, light colored. Um, and when you bend it, which is going to be everywhere, this thing has 90 degree turns everywhere, you could see, and the phone's probably not going to show it very well, but you could see the black uh, backing coming through pretty bad. And this piece ain't as bad. I don't know where the other sample is. I ordered some real light colored. It was Sahara. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty doggone bad. But it's got the black backing. And so when you did those turns, it would shine through. I mean, that black comes through pretty bad. And I wasn't going to have a bunch of seams everywhere across my boat with the black shadow on every uh, seam. And so I went with a darker color I'll show you in a minute. But the factory carpet, I was just trying to find something close to it. And, and uh, this carpet is a lot higher quality. It was made back in 2002. I called uh, White River, which is the manufacturer of these bass trackers, and they would not tell me who the boat carpet manufacturer was. But see, even if you bend it far enough, it doesn't shine through the same because they used a gray backing instead of the black. So even when you do fold it or something, you just don't really, it doesn't stand out as bad. So what I did was I went with a little darker color than I was planning on, which is still going to look great, I think. This is Malibu carpet, 20 ounce. And I got this at my local supplier. I'm lucky enough to have somebody 45 minutes away where I get most of my materials. It's called IDC and they're in Greer or Lyman. And, uh, Ryan over there, he'll definitely take care of you. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, this is the 20 ounce Malibu. And when you fold it, you really don't notice it as bad because the carpet's already a darker color. And so we're gonna try this because that other Sahara that I ordered from the place in Dalton, Georgia, I'll put the name up. I can't remember it right off. But, oh my goodness, when I opened the roll a little bit and I went to check it out and I folded it like that in my hand, you wouldn't believe how bad it was. I should have got a picture of it, but I was so upset I didn't even bother. I wound up calling them back and sending it back. It was absolutely ridiculous. If I went like this, you would see a black line. But it was a lot lighter color than this, too. It was uh, even lighter than this. It was called Sahara. But it was a 16 ounce. I thought that would be better for the locker lids to open and shut. But it had 20 ounce on it from the factory, so we're going to go back with that. I think this is going to turn out real nice. 
All right, so we got the one piece covered. That's going to be the front deck. And uh, went over it and just kind of made sure I got it nice and smooth. Cut out my hole here before the glue dries. I just keep kind of going around and pressing up against these edges to make sure where that plate is that it's going to stay nice and tight as the glue dries. Got all my edges so they don't rot or anything, rust out. Now it's time for our next one. Thanks, Dad, for helping. Hey, well. <laughs> Thanks, Jasper, for all your help and barking. Now we're just putting a thin layer of this glue on, indoor-outdoor carpet glue. And we're using the little trowels with the uh, little teeth in it. And that way we can get it spread out good. We'll make it nice and thinner when we actually get it all on there. And then she'll be ready to flip over on the carpet and cut it out and wrap it and staple it. At least we got the two wooden floor pieces carpeted now. Just wrap it around nice and tight and staple it good and wrap your corners nice and tight. Now I'm going to do the two side pieces and Jasper is going to help me by holding down the carpet while I make my cuts over here on the side. I got to make them 11 foot long, 5 inches wide, and that's going to go from the front of the boat all the way down the sides on the inside stuck. I got to do that before I can put the front deck in. Jasper, what's up, boy? All right, today we're out here doing some more carpet, and Jasper's really being a big help. So I went ahead and uh, did these inside pieces. And that way, those really have to be done first because now all the side panels and stuff will start going in. This had to be done. I still got to cut out the little area here because this is the rod locker here or the long section of it. So I got to cut that and wrap it and then the rod locker will be inside here. Got my carpet cut out for back here. I didn't glue it yet. I was just getting the rough idea and I went ahead and trimmed mine here to relieve it because the cables and stuff you know it's not going back that far anyway but it was messing with this part back here some boats stop in this area uh, this particular one has these triangle shapes back here so I did the big relief there plus I didn't want to waste that because to be honest I'm pretty tight on the carpet I'm gonna have to go get about two more yards I'll show you in a minute in the garage there because you can't just cut this out and use it on the hatch. This piece gets wasted on all these uh, hatch holes. So that's why I went ahead and saved that big piece because it will do a locker lid. Matter of fact, it's going to do that locker lid there. So I'm a little short. I got to get enough carpet to do this front strip. And my console is over there on the ground. I'll show you. I laid everything out. That's why I wanted to cut my big three pieces of flooring out on the out of the carpet because I want everything going the right direction from front to back. So now I numbered and put an arrow on each piece and everything's actually facing this way. But there's that piece that I saved near the engine. But uh, I went ahead and traced everything with chalk and again i put the numbers transferred the number onto the actual piece like this is number two facing forward and what i did was this is probably going to make it a little trickier to glue it because you don't have any leeway uh, you want to have a lot of excess hanging and then once you glue the middle section the main part then you can come back and trim the outside where you want it because it has to fold all the way over here and get glued onto the inside. So what I did was I just made a chalk mark all the way around the outside edges. So when I'm gluing it, I'm only going to glue inside that chalk area and when we lay it down, boom, we'll be able to get it nice and, and close. And then this, where I'm actually cutting in between the pieces, is going to be pretty close. I might have to do a little fine trimming, but I think I'll be all right. And uh, as you can see, I got them all laid out. I'm about to start 
cutting those out. But like I said, I need about probably two more yards because I still got to do that piece, which is under the seats. And I got a couple, the console and stuff like that out there. So I don't mind having a little excess. I should have bought more. All right, so since this is my first time actually doing a rear deck like this in the carpet, and this one has to go under the lip here. There's actually a, a little gap there. So what I did was I just went around. I, I glued all the way to about here. This is still loose so I could pull it up and do what I need to. What I did was I just tucked it up nice in the corner here and took a piece of chalk. And with my finger went down through here. So the line is a little higher. So when I go back with the scissors and cut that line, there's still enough I can take I'm going to pick it up, glue it, stick it back down, and take the uh, scrape blade and just push it down in there, and it'll be good. And then I did the same back here, just pushed it in real nice and tight, took the chalk, made a line. I don't trust taking the knife. I haven't been having much luck cutting it with the razor knife, even with brand new blades. But I want a nice cut. I want it to butt right up against that good. So I left this area right here unglued to where I could pull it back up. And same over here is a piece of trim that it can go under and then hammer the trim back down onto it. So it should work you could good. Use this to tuck it in. That's what we're gonna do, yeah. It would work right. Alright, so I'm going back and cutting in my uh, compartments now. And what I like to do, or what I figured is easiest for me, because I don't want to make any mistakes, is I just kind of found where the corner was. But I inserted my blade over here, I don't know, a little about an inch away, then made my cut away from the corners. And then once I had it where I can just fold it in a little, I stick my blade back in and come back towards the corner. That way it stops nice, you know, against the corner and that way I get a nice fold here. But I didn't go too far, like I'm afraid if I would have stuck my blade on the top, I don't want to go past the corner or something I just feel like I got a nice cut that way and then what I'm gonna do is uh, on these they got to fold in now these get a plastic bin that drops in so I can't wrap the carpet underneath on this one so what I'm gonna do is fold it nice here where my edge is I'm not that good with doing the cuts I tried it over there on that side and I don't want it to be off so what I'm gonna do is Fold it in like this, fold it over, take my piece of chalk and just run it down through here. And that'll give me a nice line that when I hold it up, I can cut it along that line. And then that way, when I get ready to glue it back in, I know I got a nice line all the way down through there. That's just me. Everybody's got their own way. Maybe you're good enough. You can just trim it. But I noticed over here when I started to try it, I measured it here and I started out. As I got over here, because I had to pull it out to do my cut. And maybe you can just glue it in and then cut along the edges. But to me, see, it started to get a little off. So to me, it's just easier to make my chalk line. And then I can hold it up. And I'll just use my big carpet scissors and go down through there and cut it. About to get me some more glued on today. Got them all cleaned up, laid out. Went around with the acetone and hit them all nice and clean. Got them all scuffed with the grinder, trying to get the glue and stuff off. All the residue as good as I could. Let's get them on. What do you think, Jasper? What do you say, boy? I've been keeping the air handy because by the time I do some cuts, I get the fuzz all over everything. Blow that off. Jasper don't like the air. cuts flips but anyway and then I take the glue and what I do is I go ahead and put it on all the carpet first on that part and then I come back and do it on the metal because by the time it's harder to put it on the carpet by the time you're done doing all the carpet especially on the opposite side on these big panels by the time you come back this will all be uh, tacky enough by the time you get done with the metal you're ready to stick it
All right, so there's a lot of spots like on this hinge here where I'm riveting. I could take my vice grips and lock it on because I'm going to tell you this carpet is so thick. I've been having to take a, a pair of old shears that I got and a lot of it I'm having to trim this carpet where it's going to uh, compress because even using these half inch long rivets, they're still not enough where you really need to clamp it when there's two layers of carpet at least because I'm telling you it's 20 ounces thick so anyway then I pre-drill my holes where I want them and my good old 100 year old drill still coming in handy drill them take the vacuum get all the shavings up throwing in my uh, rivets into the holes and then I went ahead and picked up uh, tell you what there is a lot of rivets on this boat so I went and grabbed my $39 Harbor Freight Air Riveter. And oh my goodness, I'm going to tell you, it's worth it. So worth it. Oh my God, I was going along. Number one, these will only get in certain spots. You're not going to get them in these compartments to do the lids and down in here and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I was using the good old regular hand style at first these are my dad's and i'm going to tell you it's just a pain in the butt there's too many rivets that air tool is definitely worth going and grabbing at harbor freight all right got all my lockers to in in the front section anyway Time to go grab the front floor deck and throw it in. Let's see how she looks. And so this is her all finished up. Now I still got to put the console in. I have it all painted uh, nice black and carpeted the bottom part of the console. And ordered a new uh, speedometer gauge because it was the only bad looking one. But anyway, I'll get that in real soon. I'm just busy with another project at the moment. But again, the actual carpet turned out very nicely. Thank you. Got all the hatches done, all the lids inside and out. Everything is nice and secured. Got my handles here. This is where uh, you can put like your life jackets and stuff. I do have to put my locks back in, but that's about it. Rod locker here, finished completely inside all the way up through under the deck there. Uh, this is where the seats are gonna go. I do still have to cover the seats. Those will be in another video. And like I said, I'll have a finish video at the very end with the boat completely done. But I just figured I've got so much footage on my phone. I keep storing it, you know, cause I've been working on this project for a long time off and on here and there whenever I can. And it's just taking a lot longer than I thought. So there is a lot of footage on my phone. I figured I'd do one on the carpet and show how she turned out. All these lockers, like I said, they're finished on the inside. Handles all riveted back in. Tubs or whatever you want to call it all in. They're nice and snug where they ain't going to blow open going down the lake. Got the live well and all in here. I carpeted all the edges real nice. Finished them in the corners even. So she turned out pretty good, pretty good. And then of course the motor cover, that's the one I painted. Not sure if I got that in this video or not, but you'll definitely see it. Uh, did a new sticker kit. When I had the stickers off, I seen how nice and black it was underneath. So I can't just leave it like that. I went ahead and sanded it. I had some black paint left over from a Chrysler I painted a couple years back. Sprayed it real nice, clear coated it, and uh, she turned out good. That automotive paint will hold up nicely. All right, thanks again.